So let's welcome Steven to the stage. Yes, that's what I'm talking about right there. You're hearing me well. Yeah. All right, great. We're hearing uh, you. People want to this Jose, by the way, Jose, thank you so much. We got Jose from True Reply. Thank you so much. Hey, so Steven, thanks so much for being here, man. Glad to be here. Glad to be here. Glad to be here. <laughs> you got a lot of positive vibes, man. You got a lot of people watching from all over. So yeah, um, th this is going to be good. So to start off, could you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Ah, uh, Stephen Campbell, regular guy, normal guy. Always start like this. <laughs> uh, first, <laughs> thanks for the invitation, Dodak. Um, it's really an honor to be here and a pleasure. Um, about me, I am a maker. I love building. That's my passion. And I enjoy doing it every day. I do it every single day. Because um, my background is engineering, chemical and process engineering. And I did that for some time. And ever since um, jumping into online business, internet entrepreneurship and no code, it has really been exciting, a thrill. And uh, I built a few applications using various tools, no code tools, started in WordPress initially. And you now I'm a, a huge Bubble fan. And I build most of my apps, my web apps in Bubble. And, you know, that's what I do basically every day. That's, that's me. That's awesome. That's awesome. And um, so let's talk about this. You, you're saying you've dabbled. Could you talk about a few of the things that you've built uh, with no code? Okay. So, well, you know, very, 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 very early out in no code, I started with an app that is unknown because it, it, it died a slow death. Um, no code dot domains. I launched that as a bubble app and it was just like a repeating group of domain names that persons listed, no code related domain names where you could contact, well, the admin and I would con connect you with the owner of that domain name for you to acquire the name, you know, and we had, you know, quite a number of listings, over a hundred listings of no code related domain names. Um, that's one. I did nocodeaffiliate.com, uh, which was a site that would allow you to connect with a third party, get rewardful. I would earn a commission when, when the user would sign up and they would be able to integrate an affiliate program into their low code or no code or even coded um, application. Um, eventually, I did virtualghostwriter.com, which is like what I'm known for in the no code space in the Twitter world. And um, that's basically an AI-powered bubble application. It's connected to um, OpenAI's GPT-3 API, and that allows users to generate copy, generate blog titles, blog posts, answer questions, get summarizations, you know, and ar even articles, short articles from just calling the API through the bubble app. Um, so those are some of the 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 no code tools that I developed over the time, over the period, and and some more are coming. I, I know that persons here follow me on Twitter, and you know, tiny acquisitions in the workings, and that is to come as well. So, yeah, excited about that. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, you know, and we're gonna get to the main topic in a little bit, which is motivation, what keeps you going. But I love that the different array of things that you've been building. Um, and it, it's different every single time, but it's, it all comes back. It so sounds like it comes back from a passion about you and what you want to build and what you want to make. Is that correct? That That's correct. Because, um, I've given my time a lot to other endeavors, like other things that were outside of my passion, like just to, to make ends meet, just to have a salary, have, have a decent life. And you know, that passion was always kind of stifled. So I'm, I'm in a phase now where I am building out whatever comes from within, like whatever ideas I get in my mind. And I really love software dev um, tech. No code has done that for me because I have no, well, I have some amount of coding skill, but um, it's not very good. And no code has allowed me to express that passion. So that passion of ideas, you know, um, developing these solutions that can, you know, eventually make life easier for some persons, you know, 
help persons get more information, generate income for them, and so on. But it's like this lifestyle that I want to, to go into where I am free to actually build stuff every day. I'm free to do that. So, yeah, that's what it is about. And, and I can just tell, obviously, when, you, when I talk to you, you, when you get excited about a project, it, it, it just comes out. You're smiling. You're talking about what you're learning. It, it's just so much. So that's really good. Now, for you personally, what does that freedom look like? Is it to have – is it to build when you want to? Is it having the time to think and then build? Tell me about that. What does it look like for you? Okay, so, so my process generally – follows like I would start with an idea and I would allow this, I, I, I would ruminate on this idea. I would allow it to fest and, you know, I would allow it to, to get in my mind. So I need time, actually in time and, and time away. Sometimes it takes two weeks. I'm doing nothing but just sitting down and, and saying, hey, um, can this thing work? Scrolling through Twitter, reading blogs, doing some research, you know, seeing what's out there. And in that two-week period, I would need some amount of flexibility in terms of time, money. I would need um, to be able to just give myself the opportunity to get that idea. And um, that's, that's what I want to eventually um, be the norm for my life, you know, having ideas and then moving into the building phase where I am having ideas and building all the time and also, if I want to stop building for a period, if there's a six-month period where I want to do something else, say I want to just work in a restaurant and fry some fish, I don't know. Maybe that passion will come up. I, I would want to be able to get up and do that. Or if there's a year that I want to... <laughs> it's so, it's, it's, I'm, I'm a dreamer, you know? If I want to get up and go to another island or another country for a year, just take a break and do something else, I, that, that's what's in my mind. I'm not sure how realistic it is. I know they are digital nomads, but that's the dream that I work towards and it keeps me building stuff to get to that point. I love it. I love it. So just, I, I, by the way, as I'm listening to Steven, I also read the chat. So I got you guys. I got you. I'm going to turn my mic down. Because Stevens is good, mine might just be a little bit too much. So I'm going to drop my mic down just a little bit, so we'll be on the same level, though. Um, All right. But I think you're, I think you're fine. See, Rick, the mic down. Mic check. There. Is that, we go. that better? I think you're doing great. This All is right. good. So I, I love what you're saying, and I see it a lot with Akira's talking about that, yes, a lot of people are agreeing. Lee is talking about this as well. Um, and Lee's building his own SaaS, so that's, that's good to hear. Now, I, I wanted to talk about this subject. You were saying motivation, what keeps me going. Could you talk about either do you have certain tips or how, how do you go through this? Could you talk about this at a high level and maybe just actionable things? Or how would you like to approach that topic? All right. Let me, let me do a screen share. Sure. Are you guys seeing this? This man comes prepared with some slides. He's got all kinds yep. of stuff for us. <laughs> My goodness. Yep. Uh, so I, I just prepared this this morning uh, for you guys just to give you the walkthrough of what I had in mind. So let me walk you through it. Motivation, what keeps me going. The reason why I chose this topic, I could I could have... Um, you know, went in to show you how I did virtual ghostwriter, talk a little bit about virtual ghostwriter, the thought processes that went into that. But I wanted to talk about motivation because it is what gets the process going. And that you chose a very good title or, uh, you know, focus theme, like action over ideas. And I saw persons, you know, making a, um, a note on, about that on Twitter. And I think it's a very good and relevant topic, action over ideas. How do I reach to action from the idea stage? And I think motivation is vital. Also, once you have built that thing, how do you keep it going? Or how do you get it to the next level? And it keeps coming back to motivation. 
So I'll share my personal experience and also just give some pointers based on what I have seen out there. So um, let me introduce myself again. We went through that. Virtual Ghostwriter is the app that I built. Um, I've been running it for close to six or seven months now. And I have gone through a lot of phases, psychologically, emotionally. Hey, building is, it's, it takes up your entire being, you know. Um, because it's a paid app, I have customers, right? And they would email me from time to time. Some persons want upgrades. Some persons want um, to buy more credits. Some persons see a bug. Some persons are, they, they don't like the app so much. Um, they want a refund. I haven't had a refund in a very long time, though, because I've worked out most of the bugs. Um, but it's, it becomes an emotional roller coaster. And sometimes you feel like you want to just stop doing it, even though you're getting those emails that says, hey, you just made another subscription. You have a new subscriber. And some, some days it's four or five subscribers and you know you're making money. And at the end of the month, you're seeing that money going over into your bank account. But sometimes you still just want to stop because there is an emotional aspect, a psychological aspect of it that have it has you questioning if you are really good enough or, wow, is this really happening? Should I really continue with this? Is this product good, en good enough? And that has been my experience with Virtual Ghostwriter. And I'll share the, the, the pointers as to what was significant about motivation that helped me to start and to continue with the business. I see everyone asking, developed in Bubble, what are the strengths and weaknesses of Bubble as a tool? It sounds like it's flexible, flexible to build just about anything. Um, I'll, get, I'll get to that um, in a little while, right? So let me just continue here by, by talking about what is motivation. It's the process by which people are moved to action. You mentioned action over ideas. The, process, the forces that activate a particular behavior, the internal and external wants and needs that influences an individual toward a particular goal. That is motivation. And I was on Twitter the other day and I saw this post from Kieran Ball um, at No Code Life. He's a, a popular No Code maker and founder. He has a number of projects under his belt and I follow him. He tweeted this, being a founder, and I just put in our maker, means committing to tackling varied, unstructured work over a long period of time with no guarantee of success. Isn't that the truth? Understandably, most people quit. What keeps you going? And I had determined that I was going to talk about motivation before he made this tweet. And when I saw this tweet, I was like, hey, this is exactly the thing. This is how I would express it in question form. What keeps you going? And I have highlighted um, two phases, the psychological motivation and the practical motivation. So from a psychological point of view, or, or what I would say is what happens in the mind is point one, the thought of a grander future that would outweigh every demotivating feeling, right? That, that, that's what keeps me going a lot of the times. The work that I'm doing now, it will result in a grander future. So if I feel low today, I might just um, not do anything. But that thought that, hey, you're working towards something, that keeps me motivated, the pursuit of a noble vocation that your immediate family would be proud of, right? I know some persons, they fell out of college, they left their jobs. A lot of persons leave their jobs. I've seen that on Twitter, and they're in the maker space. They're not necessarily doing no code. Some have done um, no code, but some of them are um, doing code as well. And they have left their jobs to focus full time on what they are making. And the question can come up, will my family be proud of this? Do they even know what I'm doing? Do they even understand? But you know what you're doing. And you know in your mind how 
well you can do this and how you can structure it in such a way where it results in a noble venture. It is something that helps people. It is something that um, brings value to people and persons would feel good in using your product. Third point, the thought of pursuing an idea that came from your own mind, your own head, that would be a financial benefit to yourself and your family now and for many generations to come. Now, I have personally realized that this is possible. What I've seen with Virtual Ghostwriter, I'm not a millionaire. <laughs> I'm not a millionaire. Well, I'm, I may be a millionaire in my own local currency, right? In that I've made a million local dollars, right? I'm not a U.S. millionaire. I'm not, I'm not even a, a $100,000 person. But what I have realized is that if I continue... This will be something that is very rewarding financially and that it could be rewarding for many generations to come. That keeps me going. Eventually finding out that this is what you are on earth to do and to accomplish and that this is your purpose. I know some people is uh, they, they are having jumped into being a founder or a maker. There is that self-actualization there's that thing that says hey this is what i was uh, made to do this is why i'm here i am made to do this you know and that feeling keeps you motivated that feeling of purpose if you haven't found that feeling or you don't feel like this is your purpose keep searching you know it might be in this space but what i found is that it might not look like what other persons are doing. You know, you no virtual ghostwriter, that um, AI app on Bubble never existed. No one ever integrated OpenAI's GPT-3 with Bubble. That never happened before, right? It came into my mind one day, right? So it, it, you can find out that, hey, you had an idea that you know, you're structuring the thing in, in, in a way that no one else is structuring it. And it's originally you and you provide this particular value that provides motivation. The thought that there is nothing else that you'd rather do at this time, no matter how hard it gets. And we can identify with that. So the practical motivation now, and I'll go through this quickly. I never, ever want to spend long on a presentation. So celebrate small wins. That motivates me. Take as much breaks as you need. It's okay to goof off. You know, do relaxing things. Go for walks, listen to music, leave the house, take long drives, ride your bike, you know. Take a break, you know. that That's an excellent source of motivation. And I just want to input this here. Groom yourself, you know. Groom, you know. Doc has a very good haircut um, right there. I'm sure that when Doc looks in the camera, He's like, hey, I like, I like this haircut, <laughs> you know. That brings motivation. It's, it's very possible for me to be in this dark room around the computer. My hair is growing out. You know, my, my beard is getting, you know, very long. And I get up in the morning. I don't brush my teeth. I don't bathe. And I'm just in this room. Hey, I need to make this work. I need to get this thing going. No, my family don't understand. My mom doesn't understand. My, my, my girlfriend doesn't understand. Or my, you know, if you're a girl, boyfriend doesn't understand or whatever. They don't understand. I need to get this thing done, you know. And you're in this dark room trying to 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 make it work. No, you get if if you have long hair, get your hair done. You know, feel good about yourself. Put on makeup if you're a woman. Um, come on stream and feel good about yourself. That provides motivation. You know, being well groomed provides a lot of motivation. Like for me, I see. Kyra saying, fall, falling in that trap before. You know, in the middle of the day at 12 o'clock, I work from home. And since the pandemic, it has gotten worse. Like, I don't leave sometimes. I don't leave the house sometimes. And I would be here. And like, in the middle of the day, I take a shower. And that does it. I'm like, ready to go. Yeah, right, let's go. Let's go. You know, 
Grooming helps keep you motivated. Have some level of organization and time management. Now, I'm, I'm not hard and fast on this because we have different kind of mindsets. Um, we have people that get distracted easily. Doc is a peculiar um, character as well. Doc has worked on so many projects. And, you know, you can see that his brain is unique. I think Doc is somewhat of a genius. Um, so I wouldn't put any rules to, to anything about, you know, having a structure, setting goals and whatever it is, whatever works for you, but have some level of organization and time management in your own way, right? Um, this last point, get a tiny exit and work on something new, right? I, I'm putting in a little ad. <laughs> get a tiny exit because what I'm realizing is that some persons get bored after a while. And I saw Ben, is it Ben Stokes? Ben Ben from um, Twitter, No co tiny projects dev, I think. He just said he got bored. I mean, he had a great product, product, a great project, and he got bored. I mean, you might not want to work on it anymore. Just get it out of the way. You can sell it. And tiny acquisitions will be coming around the corner soon to help you to sell that product, right? <laughs> so get a tiny exit and move on. So other practical motivations, treat your work and time seriously, even if it's for free. Pay yourself well. Take a good cut. Let go of some of the per perfectionism and enjoy what you have created. Try not to compare yourself too much with other success stories. Launch quickly. Share it on social media and respond to the comments. Comparison can be a very big point for demotivation. You are unique. You have a gift. You have talents. You know, just love yourself, love yourself and love what you have created and try not to compare yourself too much to others and their successes or failures. And that's, that's my little talk on motivation and how it affects the makeup mindset. Thank you very much. Oh man, that was great. You can see all the claps. You can see all the hands. No, it's great, man. I love hearing it. I'm getting messages. People are like, man, can we just hear Stephen talk all day? I'm like, <laughs> my goodness. Really good stuff. Really good stuff. Um, no, man, thank you so much for your time. And and what we want to do, too, we have a couple different questions for you, if you don't mind. And uh, no, this has been really good. And by the way, yes, I'm getting comments. Yes, it is recorded. We'll have this for you later. Uh, so this is going to be great. So if we can just rapid fire, do some questions, mm -hmm. if you don't mind, Stephen. Let's start at the top. Do you want to start at the top talking about, I think Evan asked about pros right. and cons. Remember, and this is the whole thing about this. It's the answers we're going to give you. It's This isn't going to be a full scope of you know uh, comparisons all the time because we want you to, to go out and build quickly, like we were saying, but we'll go through some things. So Stephen, with your perspective, uh, can we talk about that for a little bit? The, so we're going to Evan or? Yep. So I'm going to, Evan brings up, and let me see if I can bring up the question. Can I bring up? No. But it says, what was the strengths and weaknesses of Bubble as a tool? Um, okay. Yeah, why'd you choose it and everything like that? Okay. So Bubble, I, I am biased. I don't have any affiliation with Bubble or anything. I'm just put that out there. But Bubble is the best no-code tool, hands down. And you know, I'm biased and I'm also, I'm not being fair because I haven't tried everything else. But I'm saying that because just that, just on surface, looking at the other tools, in my mind, 10 years from now, Bubble will emerge as no code. Th that's just where I see it. Um, so I invested into Bubble, despite or uh, regardless of the strengths and weaknesses. Strengths, Bubble is completely visual. It's not intuitive at the outset but after you have been there a couple of times it becomes natural right if you have a logic based mind it will be easy but it comes natural with a little practice right weaknesses uh there are things that even with building virtual ghostwriter for example 
API error handling was an automated thing that Bubble did. They didn't allow the, the builder to um, change the API error notifications. And that was like a weakness because I had an error and like my customers will be getting the error message that's coming directly from OpenAI. And that would be a problem, you know. But, you know, I mean, last week, Bubble fixed that completely. So they are an improving platform. And I had anticipated that that would be done because it, it, it became obvious when I read through the forums that persons were having these issues. So those were some of the weaknesses that I had, you know, also responsiveness, you know, when you're doing bubble from a design perspective, there are some issues with responsiveness that you have to be mathematically inclined to be able to get it and, and so on. You can watch people like uh, Build Camp, Gregory John and so on. And you have other tools like AirDev Canvas that enables you to overcome some of those weaknesses. But those are the weaknesses that um, were there. It, you mentioned that it sounds like it's flexible to build just about anything. Yes, precisely. You can build just about anything, even native applications. You can build them with Bubble. Excellent. Thank you so much. And by the way, just keep in mind, um, I'm going to be dropping Steven's handle. He does do consulting as well. So if you're looking at that, listen, he's a wonderful builder, but remember, he does he does charge. But it, to get in touch with him, we can drop the it in the chat and all of those things, but really good response. Um, we're going to jump over to Lee Hills. Lee, great to see you in the chat. You're a wonderful individual. Thank you for being here. Um, uh, there's a couple questions that Lee was asking. So we'll just take one at a time, almost like rapid fire. If that's okay, Stephen. Yeah, man. Um, do you think about monetizing from the beginning? Always. Let's go. Next question. <laughs> what is the process of finding customers for your products? Process of finding customers is a trial and error. I, I, I like experiment. So Twitter is my main place to see what, what, what's in the minds of persons. I just put out like a random thing like a non-related and see what person's respond and say, okay, you know, there's some traction here. And then I put out something more, put out something more and um, see how persons respond. And then when I'm going to launch the thing, I have like this set of places, this, like this, these websites that I always go to. I can tell you them, Reddit, Product Hunt, um, Indie Hackers, um, YouTube, Twitter, Always, those are the places that I go to launch. And let me tell you, you'll get customers. Either customers can come and, and say how the, the application is foolishness or they really love it. But you'll get customers, right? Wonderful. Will, will tiny acquisitions be for products that are already monetized? No, it doesn't have to be monetized. But what... um. I would look for our products that have intrinsic value, like a newsletter. Maybe it has 300 um, persons subscribed. You have an email list. You have a product. You haven't made any money out of it or, you know, it's not monetized, but it has some value. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Um, also, too, um, that's awesome. By the way, Steven's in there right there. Um, who will be at the other end of tiny acquisition in terms of like the admin? Yeah, I don't know yet. Tell us more. Tell us more. <laughs> this is one of the questions. One thing yeah. I would like to say, and I, I apologize, Raj, I cannot say your name. I apologize. I'm terrible. I'm terrible with names. I apologize. But talking about being a software developer myself, I have some feelings, Evan. Okay, so this is one thing. I will just say this because I come in a background being a developer and a no code developer. What I will say is this is not a conversation about is no code replacing code. This is a conversation of how you can move fast and build out your MVP and build where you need to be. There might be some applications that you might need code or a hybrid or it, the list goes on and on. We're launching one that we're launching it with Ruby on Rails and a few other things. So keep in mind. This is not a place where we're going to have pick, pitchforks and everything. If you're on this line or not, we're about getting paid. We're about creating the life that you want. And if you can utilize no code for you to move fast and to validate, good health to you. That's the whole purpose. There's there's a balance. But keep in mind, if it's code against us, this isn't the place. This isn't the place. 
<laughs> okay. So we're, we're about money and about you supporting your lifestyle. That's it. Um, so one thing we're going to have, uh, keep in mind, tiny acquisition. I keep seeing that people are texting me. People are on Twitter. Listen, Steven's right here. Tiny acquisition. How can they know more about this? What's going on with this, Steven? Where can it be? All right. Tiny acquisitions. Who is going to acquire? Is it like a marketplace? Um, and there are some other questions. So, so tiny acquisitions is an idea that any maker, any, any person that is making a product or offering a service and it's built on the web, you can get that sold. Or if you are a buyer and you want to buy a particular project, you can buy it through tiny acquisitions. It is a marketplace. The ability is there. I have built the feature in for, for persons to purchase the project through the application. However, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll have to um, maybe not release that feature. Or maybe I will, but there are certain things that, that are required for marketplaces. It gets complicated and technical for persons to buy and sell through a marketplace um, because there needs to be adequate security and protection for both parties. So that's something I'm working on. But right now, you could see a project in Tiny Acquisitions. You can contact the buyer directly without my intervention or intervention of the admin. And you can have a conversation in-app. You can make an offer. There's a facility to make an offer in-app and the person can accept the offer and they can send you an invoice, right? And you can, you can take the, 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 the process outside, no problem. You can, because what I want to see is acquisitions happening. I want persons to be motivated. I want persons to have that tiny exit because I want a tiny exit, you know? And it's, it's, it's a good feeling, I think. So that's what tiny acquisitions are about. Good times. Good times. All right. So remember, uh, in the chat below, there's tinyacquisitions.com. Remember, connect with Stephen on Twitter, all of those things. Again, we love Stephen. Stephen also has a few episodes on Build With Me. So the YouTube channel, if you're, if you're not subscribed, you can go there, but you can actually search because uh, Stephen's been there talking about APIs. He's been there quite a few times. So make sure that you take a look at all things that he's doing. And he has his own YouTube channel as well. It's in the comment section down below. If you go to my channel, all of his information is there as well. And how he built Virtual Ghost Rider and our review of it. Um, it's there on the site as well. So again, thank you so much, Stephen. Um, anything else before we you roll out? No, I'm good. Thanks for <laughs> thanks for having me. Thanks Not for everybody um, watching. Really appreciate your time. Oh man, we appreciate you. And again, we'll see you during the the whole conference and everything like that. Again, thank you for being here. You're welcome. Uh,